Thanks you, uh, Arthur. Uh, we will uh, welcome the next uh, lecture, and uh, we, which been done by uh, Nikos Papadopoulos. Please, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee and uh, Calliope uh, for letting us uh, be here and uh, be able to present uh, the work that uh, it has been done uh, by our lab the, the last uh, years. Uh, just for the sake of uh, the, present, uh, for the presentation. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, when we say geoinformatics, uh, uh, we mean all this uh, research uh, direction or research uh, methods so that uh, they can be used, uh, combined all together or, uh, or one by one uh, in order to, uh, to try to, uh, to help us in order to, to, um, to map and uh, promote the cultural heritage, meaning uh, going from the larger scale, uh, satellite remote sensing, uh, geophysical prospection uh, methods, uh, geographical information systems and uh, photogrammetry and all this uh, combined together in order to see how we can uh, utilize them in order to uh, map the, the transition zone, the gray zone as it is uh, known, uh, going from the coastline up to the depth of the water of less than, uh, of less than five uh, meters. Uh, over the last uh, year, since uh, 2015, uh, we had the chance to, to deploy all these uh, methodologies in uh, different uh, sites along uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, most of the sites, they are in Crete because uh, we started uh, from there as uh, the, the, we are established in uh, Rethymno. But uh, we had the chance to, to expand also in other areas, in the Peloponnese and also in, um, in Cyprus. And uh, the sites, they are uh, spanning from different uh, chronologies, from uh, prehistoric uh, sites like uh, La Bayana in Frakti, or even uh, uh, sites that they are uh, Hellenistic uh, sites, uh, like the, the, the site in, in, in Rethymno. And of course, uh, at the same time, uh, we had the chance to, uh, to survey uh, different, uh, different areas, uh, different targets, uh, trying to, to locate uh, settlements, buried settlements, where, like walls, uh, structures, uh, buildings, uh, or to, to see whether these uh, technologies they can be used in order also to map uh, other uh, harbor, uh, harbor structures like, uh, like uh, sleepways. Now, the first thing that we, that we tried based on the satellite remote sensing was to, to use a different kind of satellite data with a different resolution and from different satellite sensors like world view data or, or, or data from the, from the Copernicus mission in order to, to derive the, the, the bathymetry based on this data. This is the example from the, from the site of the Northern Bay of Eluda that gives a very good model uh, of the bathymetry of uh, this uh, small uh, uh, bay that it was also validated with uh, data, uh, sonar data uh, that they have been collected in, in uh, the site. Of course, uh, trivial nowadays uh, methodologies like uh, RTK uh, GNSS, Total Station, and uh, sonar uh, used in order to, to, in order to, to map uh, the very the shallow part or if we want to go deeper uh, in order to have a detailed bathymetry model of, uh, of the specific uh, site. Uh, moreover, the use of aerial photogrammetry uh, was used uh, again to, to compile orthophotos and uh, digital elevation models, or in a more detailed models uh, for the digital bathymetry of uh, the bay that they are, these data are, are, are useful and uh, they are required for the subsequent uh, analysis of uh, other data that, uh, that uh, we need and uh, we explore in specific sites. Of course, all, uh, many examples for underwater photogrammetry in order uh, to, do, to document uh, specific uh, structures like uh, uh, the Basilica in, in Eluda or some uh, walls in uh, the site of La Bayana and again uh, submerged walls in, uh, in Eluda area. Uh, 3D laser scanning uh, that uh, can help us to, to document uh, specific uh, uh, sites. Uh, this is an, an example of uh, the 3D model compiled 
from the sleepway in uh, Tripitos, and you, you can see the comparison between the image that it was taken from Davaras in 1968 when he uh, visited and uh, surveyed the, the site, or in a more, uh, in an urban, uh, let's say, environment, how 3D laser scanning in combination with uh, photogrammetry can be used uh, to map the Venetian port of uh, Rethymno, and also to have uh, more structural details about uh, the Venetian lighthouse that uh, is at the entrance of uh, this uh, small uh, port. Now, uh, if we go to, to go to another dimension, uh, beside, uh, beside on the methods that we use in order to map and document what uh, we can see with our eyes, uh, we also try to use uh, geophysical methods in an effort to, to map what lies uh, below, the, b below the surface. In this case, uh, you can see some uh, uh, example of uh, ground penetrating uh, radar as it has been applied along the coast, in, uh, for example, in La Bayana and uh, in, in Palekastro. The difficulties of uh, such kind of a technique is, uh, lies in the limitation of uh, the method itself since it, uh, it needs to, 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 we need to record electromagnetic uh, signals from uh, the different horizons into the subsurface. And this is quite uh, tricky when it comes to ground penetrating radar since uh, the saline environment can absorb the signal that it is uh, penetrated uh, from uh, the antenna. However, uh, we can see that uh, in uh, uh, this uh, 2D section, uh, from uh, one, uh, one section from uh, the site of uh, Labiana, where we can see uh, 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 hyperbolas, uh, distinct uh, uh, hyperbolas that they are correlated to point sources, uh, probably uh, related to, to buried uh, walls. And if we combine multiple, uh, multiple, uh, multiple, multiple uh, sections, we can have depth slices. This is the case uh, uh, preliminary result from the site of uh, Palekastro that uh, Thotoki showed uh, the first uh, day, uh, where we can have uh, traces of walls uh, here along the road, some uh, other uh, walls uh, that uh, probably uh, continue into the, into the sea, and a big structure uh, into uh, this uh, small parking uh, place. So uh, we can see that even in this hard environment, uh, through testing, uh, we can have some quite good uh, results with uh, GPR. Now, uh, we can also uh, use uh, uh, magnetic method uh, in a, in a multi-sensor uh, array using this kind of uh, instrumentation where uh, multiple sensors, they can be uh, adjusted into this frame and all these are connected to, the, uh, to, the, to, to a GPS that help us to navigate through the, uh, uh, through the area, uh, either, on, either on coast or, uh, or uh, making the, the same, uh, the same uh, approach uh, with some modifications in order to have the measurements inside uh, the water, uh, at least in the, in the very shallow part. And uh, the limitation of where we can survey is, as you can see here, uh, Gianluca, uh, who, is, uh, who was the tallest one in our team. And this is actually the limit of, uh, of taking uh, the measurements. The, the goal of this uh, survey, uh, of magnetic survey, is to transfer the high resolution measurements that we take in land, to transfer it in the, in the, in the, in the very shallow part uh, of, of the sea, in order to have uh, as much as possible the details that, uh, uh, that we want. Uh, this is an example of how uh, structural elements uh, like uh, the, these buildings here can be uh, pinpointed in the, into the magnetic map. And if we go to the, to the shallow part of the water, uh, we can see here the outline of, of a wall, of, of, a build, of a building uh, with inner compartments that it has been mapped uh, through the magnetic survey and that, that, that was not visible uh, through the naked eyes in this uh, specific uh, environment. Uh, now, if, uh, we also we had a long time of experimentation with electrical resistivity tomography uh, in a 2D and 3D mode. Uh, this is the deployment of using static and the dynamic mode of electrical resistivity tomography in order to have uh, vertical sections from, for, uh, uh, from, from the sea bottom up into, into, into the, into the subsurface below the sea uh, bottom. Uh, again, different experimentations on how to, uh, to take the measurements into the sea and to carry the instrumentation with safety as much uh, as possible. Uh, this is actually the first, uh, one of the, uh, the first experiment that uh, we had the chance uh, to do 
uh, in Aegee, uh, Theodore in Crete. It was actually the first time that uh, we applied this uh, method uh, in this site with uh, Theotokis. Uh, in, back in, the 20, in 2015, and we can see with uh, the, red, uh, the red rectangulars that they are outlined with uh, uh, the white rectangulars, there are isolated targets related to, uh, uh, to walls, or uh, we can have the stratigraphy uh, and the dipping, the dipping uh, nature of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the bedrock, uh, which um, it's a good indication of uh, probably of, of, of the existence of, of a slipway in the site. Or if we want to go uh, to have also the stratigraphy and to be related uh, with the general tectonics of a specific uh, area. Now, if we combine uh, all these uh, uh, 2D sections together, then we can uh, have a 3D reconstruction of uh, the subsurface below the sea bottom. This is again the example of a grid uh, collected uh, from uh, the area of Luda, where we can see the outline of a building. And uh, in this case, we can also have the vertical continuation of uh, the building below the, the sea, below the sea, uh, the sea bottom. Or if we want to go a little bit faster uh, to use a boat uh, that uh, is dragging uh, the cable behind uh, the boat, this is the outline of the lines that they have been that they can be collected. We try to be as much as accurate as possible. Always, the, this is not uh, always the case because of the small drifting inside uh, the, the base. But uh, the results uh, uh, are quite promising, uh, showing areas in this case of the continuation of the wall that it already has been mapped by the, by the archaeological team of uh, Theotokis uh, in, uh, in Eluda. Uh, although this is not in Mediterranean, I just uh, give this example uh, of how resistive tomography can be used also uh, to outline the, a shipwreck. Uh, this comes from uh, Australia. Uh, it is a metallic uh, shipwreck, so that's why you, we can see the, the oval shape as uh, low resistivity uh, values. Of course, experimentation is something that uh, we need and that we have uh, to do it. So we're always trying to find new ways to, to make uh, the survey faster uh, in, this, in this environment, at least in the very shallow part. So we have tried also electromagnetic induction uh, with uh, multi-frequency uh, instruments. The first results and the in situ, but also the modeling results seem quite promising. So this is something that we are going to uh, continue. And of course, the, the, the first site that, uh, we, that this journey started was uh, Agi Theodori, but uh, uh, the site that actually it gave us the, uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, test all these uh, methods. So as I call it, as uh, a test lab, as an in situ lab uh, for, uh, for these different uh, technologies, was uh, the site of uh, La Bayana in, uh, in Peloponnese. Uh, we can see here the area that has been scanned uh, over the five years, the duration of uh, the project, the, the resolution that we have, and uh, actually, uh, to the best of my knowledge now, this is, uh, this is uh, the largest area with this kind of, uh, of resolution that it has been uh, scanned, almost 4.5 hectares into, uh, into the sea. Uh, as, as, as in another dimension, uh, living, uh, that we're trying to unite all this information that we have from, uh, uh, from the doc documentation with these different techniques that I have shown, but also incorporating any kind of other spatial data uh, that coming uh, from a specific site, uh, geological data, hydrogeological data, any kind of anthropo anthropogenic or environmental data, they can be, can be all combined uh, through uh, a fuzzy logic uh, multi-criteria decision algorithms in order to create uh, uh, maps like this that they show the, the risk assessment, the, uh, the, the risk and the, the vulnerability of specific archaeological uh, sites. Uh, this is actually the outcome, of, the outcome of, of a project that they recently uh, completed. Uh, so if you want more information, uh, you, uh, this, uh, uh, we can see the, the web of uh, the site. Now, based on this uh, experience, all these uh, years, and uh, the collaboration that uh, we had with all, all, all the people that we had the chance uh, to collaborate, uh, 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 a new project is going to is already uh, started, uh, Klepsidra, uh, that we're trying to translate, as we say, the submerged cultural heritage from shallow water to geoinformatics, different, all these kind of uh, technologies uh, combined uh, uh, together. 
uh, in order to, uh, to have a more unified uh, approach of a specific sites. Uh, uh, the area is the, that we're going to apply all this, it is the, 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 in the Eastern Crete, uh, in, in Hrisi, in Kufonisi, uh, uh, Lefki, in Hrisi, uh, Stomio and uh, Yerapeta. This project is actually a joint collaboration with the f of Underwater Antiquities and uh, the CNR uh, from uh, Italy. And uh, I hope in the next, uh, in the next uh, conference to have some good results uh, to, uh, to show. Uh, all this work has been published in uh, uh, all these years in uh, numerous uh, journals and uh, presentations in conferences. So there is a lot of bibliography behind of it. So this is just a glance of what it has been done the last, uh, the last years. And of course, uh, these are the, the true heroes behind uh, the scene, that these are the people that uh, I would really like to, to thank, that they gave me the opportunity to be here in front of you and show these uh, results. I really thank them from the bottom of my heart for the hard work that they, that they have been done uh, the last uh, years. Uh, of course, uh, this would not be also accessible uh, without the help of uh, the authorities and uh, uh, the funding bodies that, uh, bodies that they, that they uh, funded all this research. And, uh, but a special thanks, it has to be, done, to be given to the effort of underwater antiquities uh, because uh, their support uh, the last uh, years, uh, it, is, uh, it is unique in order to, to continue to work on uh, subjects that uh, we all want to explore and, uh, and expand. In closing, uh, I just want, uh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm really sorry, but uh, uh, it, is, it is actually my, my first conference after almost uh, three years. Uh, I didn't have the chance to, uh, to say this on, on publicly, but uh, I, have to, I, I want to thank Dr. Uh, Junho Kim, he was one of my best friends and uh, collaborators that I had, and I was very lucky to be with him. I worked with him uh, uh, for one year when I was uh, in Korea. Uh, he was actually the one that really helped me when I decided to, to work with uh, resistivity tomography in, uh, in underwater surveys. Uh, his theoretical background and the practical uh, experience really helped me. He was a mentor to me, and uh, I would like to dedicate this uh, presentation to his memory. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation of uh, some solution for this, this uh, gray zone, uh, unfortunately well known uh, from uh, any archaeologist uh, working on ancient ports. Uh, 